Hi everyone, I am Agi, Assistant Professor, PG Department of Chemistry from Econ Development Center, Majlis Arts and Science College, Purmano. Today, in this session, I would like to discuss about two molecules. They are protaxane and catenine. After discussing this session, you all will be able to define what is protaxane and what is catenine. Then you could write the preparation of protaxane catenine. Also, you will be able to draw the structure of catenine protoxin. Finally, you will be able to explain the applications of protoxin and catenine. So, first of all, we could discuss what is protoxin and catenine. Simply, we could say that catenines are two or more macrocyclic rings are mechanically interlocked and we cannot able to separate them without breaking a chemical bond. In the case of protoxane, we are having a linear molecule which is terminated by two bulky groups at the two end and it is threaded through a microcyclic ring. One point to remember is that in the protoxane, the linear molecule which is terminated by the bulky group can be called as a dumbbell shaped molecule. Next, we could discuss how we could name the protoxane and catenines. catenines. In the case of catenines, the naming basically depends on the number of macrocyclic rings. And also in protoxane, the naming is uh, depends on number of macrocyclic rings and also the dumbbell shaped molecule. For explaining this, we could take some examples. As you can see, this is the first example for catenine. You, here you could see two macrocyclic rings, they are interlocked. So, the name can be written as N catenine. The N stands for number of macrocyclic ring. So, here we have two catenine. The name also can be said as two catenine. You could listen the suffix. One is catenine and or we could use catenine. So, the number two representing the number of macrocyclic rings. In the second example, we could see there are two macrocyclic rings and the name start with two and it is can be seen as catenate. The point is that the suffix is different. We could explain the reason. In the figure, you could see a dot in between the uh, locked macrocyclic ring and that dot is a metal which is coordinated to the macrocyclic rings. So, if a metal is included in the structure, we could name it as catenate. So, so the name to catenate. In the third one is very simple. Here we could see three macrocyclic ring. So, it is named as three catenase. So, just remember uh, the general formula N catenate. Now, we could name the rotaxane. So, we could see the first example. In the first example, there is a linear molecule which is threaded through the macrocyclic ring. But the problem is the end is not terminated with the bulky group. So, this can be named as N pseudo rotaxane. N stands for number of macrocyclic ring plus the linear structure. And also the point is that the pseudo rotaxane are the precursor of catenines as well as rotaxane. Fourth example, you could see a rotaxane. It is named as 2 rotaxane. 2 stands for one macrocyclic ring and one linear structure. In the last example, you could see there is two macrocyclic ring and one linear structure. So, it is named as three rotaxane. Now, we could discuss about the synthesis of catenine and rotaxane. First of all, we could say there are two methods that we can adopt for the synthesis. First one is the statistical approach and second one is the direct method. Now, we could take a schematic example for the direct synthesis can be named as self-assembly. As you can see in the figure, there are two molecules, one is guest and second is host. That is, this can be explained by guest host chemistry. So, here the guest is the linear molecule, host is the macrocyclic ring. The first molecule is the linear molecule and the second molecule is the macrocyclic ring. So, by self-assembly, the linear molecule is threaded through the macrocyclic ring 
leads to the formation of pseudo protein by cyclization process it leads to the formation of 2 catenine by bonding the two bulky group at the two end of the linear chains leads to the formation of protein so this is a schematic representation for the direct synthesis of catenine and protein now we could take an example for a statistical approach for the preparation of catenine here the first molecule we could say it is a diester and the second molecule is a macrocyclic ring which containing 34 carbon atom by giving the suitable reaction condition we could say that this molecule undergoes cyclization and forms the two catenine now we could take a statistical uh, rotexin synthesis now we could take the example for statistical rotexin synthesis here is the example so you could see this molecule it's the two end is bonded with a bulky group and it leads to the formation of rotaxy. Now, the problem with the statistical approach is the yield is very low. Clearly, we could say it is approximately less than 1% compared, compared to statistical method, the direct method has the high yield. Maximum, we could get up to 20%. Even though, whatever the method, we could prepare catenines and rotaxy. Now, this is again schematic representation of the synthesis of rotaxane. There are three methods that we can adopt. The first one is clipping. As you can see, this is the dumbbell shaped molecule. And here we have two fragments. So, these two fragments will move to this dumbbell shaped molecule and it undergo a clipping process. So, we could get the rotaxane. And the second method is Threading. Threading means here we have the macrocyclic ring and the dumbbell shaped molecule is separated. That is a linear molecule is there and two bulky groups are there. So after entering this macrocyclic ring to the linear molecule, the two bulky group will be bonded. Like that we will get the rotaxin. This method is called threading. The last one is slipping. As the name indicates, the macrocyclic ring will be slowly slip to the linear molecule for leads to the formation of rotaxane. So, this is a schematic representation of the synthesis of rotaxane and it gives high yield compared to statistical approach. Now, we could take an example for clipping. So, in this example, you could see this is the linear molecule and the two end of the linear molecule is bonded with a bulky group. Here, we could see two fragments. So, after entering these two fragments, to the linear molecule, it's undergo clipping. Now, we could discuss the applications of rotexin. For explaining the application of rotexin, we could consider the structure of rotexin. So, in this, in that structure, we have a linear molecule and it is encapsulated by a macrocyclic ring. In that molecule, we could see two movements. One is the translational movement of the macrocyclic ring and also the rotational movement of macrocyclic ring with respect to the linear molecule. So, these two movements help us to use this molecule as molecular machines or molecular switches. So, that is the uh, highly appreciated example for rotaxin. And apart from that, it can be used as ultra stable dyes and also it can be used for the nano recording. Now, we have the applications of catenines. As in the case of rotaxin, catenine can also be used as a molecular switches or molecular machines. This is because uh, we could consider the example 2 catenine. Here we have two macrocyclic ring, they are mechanically interlocked. The one macrocyclic ring can rotate with respect to other one, and this movement can be used as a signal. So, like that, we could use this as a molecular switch. And moreover, that we could use the catenines as chemical sensors, drug delivery agent, catalyst and sensors to polymers and optical bioimage. So, these are the uh, references for this rotaxin and catenine. Now, let us sum up this topic. In this session, we discussed about rotaxin and catenine. We explained what is rotaxin and what is catenine and we studied about the naming of rotaxin and catenine. catenine. After that, we go on for the preparation of these two compounds. After the preparation, we have discussed about the applications. I hope everything is clear. Thank you. Thank you.